Professor Kay here, and today we're going to take a look at the high-level differences between floats, flexbox, and grid. The reason why you want to know the difference between these three types of layout is because they behave a little bit differently with your backgrounds. So when you understand how these work at a high level, it will help you decide which ones to use when. And one of these, I'm actually going to use a neat trick with it to kind of help me along with my Your Favorite Recipe assignment. So let's get started. All right, so here I have a code pen demo of three different types of layout strategies we can use in CSS. We have floats, as I said, and with floats, if we think about the relationship between content and layout, the content is going to bend to other content. So I realize that doesn't make a whole lot of sense here yet, but I'm going to show you and then you're going to kind of see how it works in practice. So over here, I'm just going to uncomment these lines and kind of show you interactively what types of items have what classes and then what happens when we apply the float to them. So let's start by seeing what has the float item class. So the float items in here, anything that is floated is outlined in red here. Now we haven't applied the float left yet, but when we do, this is going to behave a different way. Notice that the paragraph does not have the float class on it. Let's see what happens when we float these items left. There we go. So what's happening here? Content, our paragraph, is bending to other content when it is floated, this one. So as you can see, what happens with floats is they are taken out of the flow. And the flow in CSS is kind of this layout concept, which is an item takes up space, and it takes up as much space as it needs to. And then other items around it will kind of respect that space, depending on what properties you select. So with floated items, they are taken out of the flow. And that means that stuff flows around them. It doesn't respect the space. Floats are like the disrespectful CSS layout trick. So notice here that this paragraph is going around the one. And if you continue going through here, it'll like wrap around. So floats are a really awesome strategy when you want to use, say, like an image and have text wrap around it. That's like the perfect use of floats. You can float left, right. That's about it. There's no float center. You'll also notice that as we make this bigger and smaller, these two and three, they are floating after this paragraph, but they're kind of stopping here. They're not going all the way left. And why is that? It's because these two are not going to... If there's any extra space here, it's these are going to fall over and then they accidentally hit the one here. So that's why they stop there. That's what's happening. All right, so that's floats and that's a float item. Now I'm gonna comment out the border here. We're not gonna take a look at the items now. I wanna take a look at the container. So here, I'm just gonna have the red border around our float container. And you can see that this container is over here in our CSS. It's around all of our items, one, two, and three in our HTML. And right now, even though it's wrapped around all our items, it's stopping after the paragraph. Why is that? Because like I said, floats are taken out of the flow of CSS. So the trouble with that is that when things are taken out of the flow, the space that they take up is no longer respected. So this is ending the space early because the last item in here that has space that's respected is this paragraph. Let's take it out and see what happens. So I've cut that out. And now you can see that none of the space of these three are being respected. In fact, it's only the space that's within this container that's being respected. So let's just put that back. And this can actually be desirable in some cases. I'll show you that in a minute. But first of all, let's take a look at how to fix it. The way that we fix this is by doing what's called clearing our floats. So the old way to do this would actually be to literally put a div and then a slash div, like literally just an element to clear your floats. So div style equals clear both. And when you add that, you can see that now the red border goes around all three items. This clear both is key to getting these items to clear, but it must be on an element after the floated items. So that's not very practical in our case. If you try and put this clear both on the float container, because it's on the parent, it's not gonna do anything. So see, didn't do anything. 
not so good. A kind of neat shortcut that you can use here is called overflow hidden. This triggers a different type of layout rendering in CSS. The technical details I've never actually quite understood. I'm sure if I like sat here and really thought about it and researched it, I'd be able to tell you why this happens. I'll see if I can get you an answer for like a future video. But for now, just know that this is one type of clear fix technique. That's the word that you want to search for, clear fix, to get this to work. Another one that you might see is using pseudo elements before and after to get this to happen. But the easiest way and simplest is just to add an overflow hidden and it will do the thing for you. So why, why might this be desirable, this type of behavior? Why might you not want something to take up space in the background to end early in a float? Well, one example in my recipe for disaster here is my ingredients. So here I have an ingredients background. It holds my ingredients title and my ingredients list, but I actually want this background to end early, earlier than the list. And I want the directions to pull up over it. So this is actually a perfect case of using the float and taking this element out of the flow. That's actually a desired behavior. So when we go back and when I actually go to style the layout for your favorite recipe, I'm going to use this trick to get that done. This is when um, you can really use some of these quirky CSS behaviors to your advantage. All right, so let's take our focus off of floats for a moment and talk about two other types of layout that we have at our disposal, Flexbox and Grid. In Flexbox, your layout is going to bend to content. What does that mean? Well, let's take a look at our Flex container first. Flex is all about the container because what you do is you set the display to be flex and then the rest of your content kind of bends to that and sort of fits inside the box. So let's just put a display flex here and see what happens. All right. So what happened here in comparison with our float above? Well, with Flexbox, your content is going to take up exactly the space that it needs. In fact, this is the same with floats. Floats take up only the space they need too. So you'll notice that the width of the one, two, and three is the same as the width of the one, two, and three here in Flexbox. But these two behave a little bit differently. Here, Flexbox says, I want to squish everything onto one line, so I'm not going to let the paragraph take up all this space like it would in a float. I'm going to try and fit one, my paragraph, and two and three all on the same line, which means the paragraph gets less space. That's how the layout bends to the content. So basically, the items that take up lots and lots of space, they'll try and take up lots and lots of space. And then otherwise, in Flexbox, things will use the minimum amount of space that they need to. You can change this behavior using Display Flex and some different properties, but for now, all you need to know is that's how that generally behaves. Lastly, we have Grid content bending to layout. So I am going to take my border off here so we're not focusing on it. And now we're going to focus on this grid container with the red border. So here, this is my grid container. It holds the same three items. And now I am going to change the display to grid. And nothing happened. <laughs> grid doesn't do anything until you tell it to. Uh, you might have gotten like a little margin there and that's it no major layout stuff happens. And that's because our content doesn't dictate the layout. The layout dictates where the content is placed. So unlike Flexbox, Grid wants you to say what the layout is. And you do this using Grid Template Columns and Grid Template Rows. Those are the two key properties to use here. So if you want to really dictate your layout and not let the content control it, Grid is your solution. I'm going to uncomment this. And how you read this is all of your columns on as many rows as you have, you want to have four columns and you want them each to have one fraction, one FR of the space available. So four with one fraction of the space, that's how you divide into four equal columns. And now you can see that the content is going to bend to that layout. The one takes up one quarter of the space. The paragraph takes up another quarter of the space. Same with two and three. Even though they don't need that space, they take it up because Grid says, that's how I want you to do things, content. I want you to actually take up the space in here. 
Now you could kind of play around with this and you could say two FR, two fractions, that wouldn't really do anything, but you might specify a value for each, um, you might specify values here. There's like all kinds of different ways you can do this. You can make this span two columns. You can do all kinds of stuff with grid, but this really isn't the time and place to get into that. What's really important to know is just kind of the high level. What do each of these things do? And just to start with this week, we're going to use floats to our advantage. We're not really going to go into Flexbox or Grid just yet because we don't need them. I don't need them in my mobile mockup yet, but these will come into place soon. So with that, I hope that gives you a better understanding of kind of your options for laying things out. Next, we're going to talk about padding and positioning and using some of these techniques to really work on the your favorite recipe assignment and um, use them to our advantage. I'll see you in just a moment.